So I went to see Kang. I can tell you my problems, meditating my silence. But I keep punching my pen, rotating my stylus. Broken is feeling like seeing, not no breath, low dollar. So it is Kang Quantumanium time. I am heading to the theater. Now, I am not the biggest Ant-Man fan. I don't think um, I've ever been accused of that. But I like him. I like Paul Rudd. I like Ant-Man, the character. Like, he's no issue with me. And this movie has been one of my must-sees for, you know, since I knew that Jonathan Majors was going to be a part of it. And that is purely what is uh, getting me into the theater today. <laughs> so that being said, let's go see Quantumania. Used to be left on red, now all the girls go holler. Now all the girls go follow. All the fake fans gon' pile up. I need peace to borrow, get that shit right back tomorrow. Somehow all the fans go bravo, smile so much to hide my sorrow. Faith is shaky in Verado. Static Shock from the Static Shock series. I love that character so much because he was literally me, right? Growing up in the hood, trying to do the right thing. And that was what inspired me to do the right thing in the first place. And just seeing that character coming from what he came from and trying to overcome it is something that I needed to see. And I didn't know I needed to see it until I got older. It's gonna come up. The list of roles that he has played is actually quite short, but oh my goodness, it's so regal. Thurgood Marshall, Jackie Robinson, T'Challa, who else was gonna play Black Panther? Of course it was gonna be Chadwick Boseman. So they got me in here, taking an exam. This is the same thing that happened when I came to see um, Doctor Strange. And I don't know, man, I'm excited to hear. I um, don't know what I'm in for. I keep seeing mixed reviews. But me, I'm here to see games. I could care less. I'm Rain Coleman, the Carefree Black Nerd, and I discuss all things representation in comics and related media. And as of February 17th, I saw Kang. <laughs> so Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania came out on Friday, well, Thursday night, but Friday, February 17th, 2023, is the kickoff film of the Phase 5 of the MCU. And I have thoughts. So I took myself to see the movie early Friday morning, and... I enjoyed it. Now, to me, it felt like something that was more or less a placeholder for something else. Like, watch this thing because something bigger is coming. With that in mind, for the movie we got, I still think it was pretty good. Um, I will say that it felt like an Ant-Man film. And I had a lot of questions during it. Like, why would you do this? Why would you do that? What's the choice here? Um, but it was good. I will say I don't know that it needed to be called Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because the Wasp, she was there. Well, mm, I guess it being Michelle Pfeiffer, it, mm, just, all in all, it was interesting. Um, the movie took place mostly in the quantum realm and what I that was probably one of the things that I liked a lot about the film is the quantum realm. So quantum realm was pretty beautiful green screen. I would like to see the behind the scenes of what that looked like when they were filming it with just against like green boxes and green shapes and running around and having a good time. Um, it opened us up to a world of characters and things in a way that is going to be useful going forward because you don't have to work in the continuity of MCU. Maybe you could work in its own continuity, but you can do fun fantastical things there and that's what this movie was to me it was just a fun movie 
Okay, so my feelings. My feelings about the movie, I had fun. I had a good time. Um, I was there for Kang, first and foremost. Um, everybody else was just, you know, icing on the cake, <laughs> on the Kang cake, but it was fun. I uh, one thing that I liked, and I liked even before seeing the movie, was the Paul Rudd, Ant-Man, Scott Lang uh, book. And this is something I've been saying for a while, is like, how do you not take in-universe things and make them real? Like, even the book of Ashanti, like, it may not be real spells and magic or whatever, but like, that would be a nice something to pick up. So having Scott Lang's book, which I think is... Watch out for the little guy. I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, having that book and having it be a real book that you can purchase, I think Scott slash Paul is the best person for that. I want to pick up that book. I probably will pick it up um, and give it a read. And that was an interesting, fun part of the story. Um, him not being in New York, great, even better. That the book was one and then the... Uh, the funness of the quantum realm. I like that we got something a little bit more abstract. We got something a little bit more like Dr. Seuss-ish that you could play around with. And I hope that we do revisit that space sometime soon. I don't know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. One thing I didn't like was hope. There wasn't a lot of hope. Not in the ways that I feel like we should have for this to be a Ant-Man and the Wasp titled movie. She saved the day a bunch of times. She had her Tony Braxton shake and go wig and I loved that for her. But I was just like, bruh, it would be nice to get more of her. I mean, we got just the right amount. We were balancing a cast of a lot of people, but I just, I wanted more. I did love Michelle Pfeiffer. I absolutely loved Jen. She killed it. She killed it. That Storm wig from X-Men 1 was, the lace was lacing and she was doing the thing. Um, but for me, I. Uh, older, mature, senior actors and actresses always have a special place in my heart. I like to see them doing things where you're not just this grandma in a nursing home. That's a valid role to play, but I like that she was just like moving, whooping butt, taking names. The One of the benefits of this movie for me is that the quantum realm through the eyes of Janet, having been there for 30 plus years and having to make it on her own was interesting to me. It drew me in. That was something in the movie where I was like, I would love, you know how nerds do, we always want more than what we were given, but I would love to see some movie, uh, web series, comic book, something that shows the interaction she had. They, they felt really fleshed out from the, quantum realm Rita putties that they were fighting to like all of the different alien characters to um, the possible love affair she had for 30 years and even the one that she may have had with Kang. Like I enjoyed that. I thought that was pretty good and it made me want to know more. So kudos to Marvel and to Ant-Man and the Wasp there. Now, Cassie <sighs> kind of made me mad in a lot of this movie, but then I was like, okay, you're frustrated with her, but why? Like, is this truly something to be frustrated with, with the information we've been given? So they, they, her family, weren't really giving her answers. And so she would, had to go and do things on her own. Well, by doing these things on her own, you're setting in motion things that will <laughs> disrupt everything else. And so though I was frustrated with her, it was also like, well, what do you do when you're left to your own devices and nobody in your life is giving you answers? This was my same issue that I had with Rowan and um, uh, Mayfair Witches. Though I'm not watching that show, have no interest in it. The first two episodes that I watched, it was the same thing. Everybody was gaslighting her and not telling her what was what. So I enjoyed, though I was frustrated with Cassie, I was like, I definitely see it. Her arc in the movie was really good. She felt like a young person. She was a fun girl. She was definitely like, we're here to save the day. She felt like a young kid who's riding for a cause. And that I think was made so concrete with her character in this film that when she shows up later on and has that same attitude, it'll feel, it won't feel like it's out of left, left field. It won't, yeah. <laughs> so I enjoyed that about Cassie. So with the characters, I think everybody did a pretty good job, but Jonathan and Michelle stole the show for me. I am so sorry, not sorry. So Jonathan, of course, of course he was gonna kill it. Everything that he's been in, 
he's done a good job. There <laughs> were parts of this film where I could see Atticus Freeman and I could also see his character from The Last Black Man in San Francisco and he played his part. Uh, I enjoyed the flashbacks that we got the scenes that we got of Kang actually conquering before landing in the quantum realm. I would have liked to have seen more maybe throughout the course of the movie, seeing him get increasingly more conqueror-ish. <laughs> um, that would have been nice. I did enjoy seeing Michelle, well, Janet, doing her little thing in the quantum realm, but it, it led me to, to this idea that don't kids don't become scientists because things like this will happen because this doesn't happen to someone who's just like i'm joe the i don't know second grade teacher i'm in the quantum realm or i'm melissa the plumber and i'm in the quantum realm that that may not happen as frequently as uh with someone who is a scientist you have that occupational occupational hazard of possibly ending up in a quantum realm the other thing i did like about the quantum realm as it pertains to uh janet was that this feels like a way to do an old man logan type character or type story here that's what it felt like that well that's what i kept thinking about the entire time that she was on screen in those like tattered clothes and whatnot so Kudos to them there. Not sure if that was intentional or not, but that's the feeling that I got. So shout out to that creative team. Now, was it good? Uh, again, I think that this was a pretty good movie. It was fun. It was what it was. And it wasn't anything more, anything less. It was very fantastical. Um, it was not without its flaws. Some of Kang's reasoning and actions to me didn't line up in the third act of the movie for the Kang that we got in the first act of the movie. So... That is what it is. I know that with these films, you really just need to, the good guys have to win. And we have something set up for later with, like through this movie, but yeah, it's like all of the abilities he had before, how are you not using them now? And we can, mm, but whatever. Sometimes you gotta just let the story wash over you. And that's what I did with this one. Also, Ant-Man. So I was never a fan of Ant-Man. I don't have anything against him. I love me some Paul Rudd, but even the Ant-Man in the comics, it's like, uh, this is whatever. He's a guy. And I think that having Jonathan Majors as Kang and introduced through this film kind of elevated Ant-Man a bit to me. But for Kang to be quote unquote defeated, because if you know, you know, at the end, I, I guess I was like, was this the character to do that? Perhaps it's the sciencey science behind it all that was like, yeah, of course. But I'm like, hmm. so I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to trust the process and hope that we're going to get something even greater going forward. But that was the part of the film for me where I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> How is Kane getting his butt whooped physically by y'all? Now, if you're doing the technological stuff and and shutting him down and his systems and his communication. That I'm fine with. But like, hand to hand, Kang has been trying to get out forever in a day. He has a vendetta against y'all. Ain't no way. <laughs> but that's the story we got. So, hey, that's what we got. Getting to the end credit scenes, both of them, I was floored. I did not know what to expect. I'm glad nothing was spoiled for me. I sat in that seat, watched that first scene, and I was like, ah, I knew it. So we got um, an ode to Kangs in the past, present, future, whatnot, different Kangs. Ramatut, as soon as I saw him, I had to suppress the desire to hop up and be like, yeah, I I know about him. <laughs> but with doing the Kang research for the previous uh, Kang Suite episode and going over Ramatut very briefly, but seeing him there, I was like, yes, yes. So we have some more Kangs to discover, some variants to deep dive into over the course of the Kang Suite. So yeah, all in all, it was pretty good. Uh, the end credit scenes were great. Um, and I say they were great because they did feel like, okay, okay, I'm of two minds. So one, they were great because they they showed us, the audience, a taste of what we're in store for. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm of the other mind where it feels almost like this entire movie was just to get to that point. Like watching this on its own without the two end credit scenes, it's a good movie. It's You can watch it and have fun with it. 
Um, but having s watched both of those, it feels like, yeah, hey, this whole movie was to sh set up the importance or the severity of the situation for this very bolded exclamation point. And I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that this was a good movie independently on its own? Do you think it was a good movie and it was just good on its own? Or do you think that it's better because of the end credit scenes or like it works specifically to get to those end credit scenes? Let me know in the comments and as a kickoff to the next phase, I think this was pretty good, but all my previous comments support that me saying it's pretty good. It feels like you're letting us know that there's a new Thanos in town. There's a new heavy hitting threat. So Kang Dynasty is going to be interesting. Secret Wars is going to be interesting. These variants and Loki season two is going to be interesting. And I myself can't wait for each and every one of them. So. Kudos, Marvel. You did it again. You sucked us in for another <laughs> film and many more to come, I'm sure. But let me know. Did you enjoy Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium? Did you enjoy Kang? Uh, how about Paul Rudd? Did you enjoy him and his performance? Because he was pretty fun. <laughs> um, and Cassie and all of the fun, fantastical feats that were feated in this film. Um, so until next time, y'all, <sighs> stay carefree, stay nerdy, stay geeky, and... Watch out for them kings. <laughs> Me. And I will burn them out of time. <laughs>